This video will demonstrate our technique for the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. The first step is to measure and create the Roux limb. We start at the ligament of trites and measure back to a comfortable distance from there. We then divide the bowel here with a white cartridge stapler. The stapler lays down triple rows of titanium staples on each side and cuts in between automatically. We'll immediately place a clip on the distal stump of where we've divided the bowel so we can keep track of which is which. We then fire one more firing of the stapler onto the mesentery of the bowel for increased mobility. We then measure down 100 centimeters from the point of division and this will become our spot for our new anastomosis. Now we're ready to make our distal anastomosis. We make openings in each loop of bowel with the harmonic scalpel. We make these openings as small as possible. We then insert the stapler into each opening in the bowel, one jaw to each opening. Firing the stapler so positioned will create an opening between the two loops of bowel. We then extend this opening between the two loops of bowel with another firing with the stapler inside, one jaw to each side of each wall of the bowel. We now have a single opening in the wall of the bowel and this is closed transversely with further firings of the stapler. We do this in a careful way so as not to narrow the openings of any of the loops of bowel. After placing a few clips along the staple line to help control oozing from the staple line, we'll use a suture to close the gap in the fatty drape between the two loops of bowel where we've made our new anastomosis. Suturing the fatty drape closed in this way helps prevent internal hernias in the future. We then use a fibrin glue that's like an epoxy made of chemicals that come from the blood to seal up the areas of the staple lines. Now we're ready to bring the Roux limb up toward the top of the stomach. In order to eliminate tension as a problem, we divide the omentum that sits on the top of the colon and this allows a trough to be made so that the Roux limb can sit in this trough and reach up to the top of the stomach with as little tension as possible. Here we're dividing the omentum with the harmonic scalpel. The harmonic scalpel allows division of tissues without much bleeding. Our first step in creating the stomach pouch is to dissect out the tissues where the esophagus comes through the hiatus or the diaphragm muscle, and this is where the stomach begins. We then measure down from the top of the stomach to a certain point along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Next we'll make an opening in the fatty tissues alongside the stomach so that the stapler jaws will be able to access the anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach. Here we're gaining access to the lesser sac which is an open space behind the stomach. We can now get the stapler jaws around the stomach and make our first firing which is transversely across the stomach wall. We then aim our stapler toward the top of the stomach and finish the stapling of the stomach pouch. The stomach pouch will hold about 30 cc's at one time. We make sure we've completely divided the stomach pouch from the rest of the stomach. We use hemoclips to control oozing from the staple lines. We then use our fibrin glue to come along the staple lines as well and this adds extra security. Now we're ready to make the connection between the new stomach pouch and the Roux limb of bowel. With the Roux limb adjacent to the new stomach pouch, we begin with a suture to connect the two tissues. The communication between the Roux limb and the stomach pouch will be made with suture in two layers, one around the outside layer and another around the inner layer. A sutured anastomosis or hookup of this kind 
affords excellent protection against bleeding and leaks, as well as becoming tight or strictured in the future. Here we're securing the back row suture, but we'll come back to it later. Now we're going to make an opening between the stomach pouch and the rule limb, and we'll continue on with our sutured anastomosis. We'll use a different colored suture for the inner layer of the anastomosis. Now we're just about finished with the back wall of our inner layer of suture. We'll start now with another suture and this will be the anterior wall of our inner layer. The two strands of white suture will be tied to each other at the far end and at the near end of the new anastomosis. Once the anterior wall meets the posterior wall, the two strands are tied to each other. The two strands are then cut, and the inner layer of the anastomosis is finished. Now we start with another green suture to make the anterior wall of the outer layer of the anastomosis. Again, the two green strands, the anterior and posterior wall strands, will be tied to each other at the far end and at the near end of the new anastomosis. This outer layer provides an extra protection against leaks and bleeding. Now the anastomosis is complete and we check it visually to make sure it looks good. We'll also want to do testing. We block off the rule limb as it comes away from the bowel hookup and blow air into the stomach pouch through a tube that's been slid down inside. We make sure there's no bubbling and this means the test is passed. We'll also want to apply fibrin sealant which we apply to the outside of the suture line anteriorly and posteriorly. We apply the fibrin sealant to the anastomosis as well as all the other staple lines and the gap through the omentum. Now we're finished. Thanks for watching. Please visit us on the web at advancedobesitysurgery.com.